How's it going? Um, so yeah, I just went and saw Guardians 3. Just got right out of the theater uh, just now. It's, uh, I saw it actually pretty early. I saw it at like 3.30. And it was so early, they gave me like a 30% discount off their normal tickets, which was, that was nice. But I'll give you my review and tell you what I think of it. There will be spoilers, so you've been warned. Um, heavy, heavy spoilers. Um, overall, I think it was a, a pretty good movie. Um, is it the best Guardians? Um, there's parts of it that are really, really good. Uh, the one is still just really good because it was how unique it was. I think it's better than two. To be honest, I can't really remember two, so maybe that's why it is better because this one is definitely probably has more memorable parts. I will say the like, like the first third kind of is weird, and I don't really like it as much, and I literally almost forgot it. Um, the movie's pretty long. It's two and a half hours long. And I literally almost forgot the first third. And I was like, wait, what happened? And I was like, I know there's some part. And that's how it's like, I don't think it's that good. And what I'm talking about is, so it starts off pretty fast. It just gets, boom, right into the plot. Adam Warlock comes, hurts Rocket. Now they're on a mission to save Rocket. And they have to go to, I don't know, some base that's made of like actual tissue like, it's not a metal base. It's like this floating base that's like an organism. And just the tone of it was this, I didn't really like. It was kind of just kind of goofy and, and kind of silly. And it doesn't really, because it goes from like a very serious, like, okay, rockets hurt. We need to get there. And then they're like, oh, well, we kind of make, want to make it lighthearted. And then like, for me, the jokes were like, okay, some of them landed, some of them didn't. And then... And then they do that, and then they're like, oh, great. Now we have to go to the high evolutionary to because they get this little orb and has the, the instructions in it or whatever. But they're like, oh, it doesn't actually have the instructions to save Rocket. So we have to go because Rocket's hurt, and they need to get this orb. And so they get this orb, but then the orb is basically useless. And they find out they have to actually go to where the high evolutionary is. So it's almost like that whole part was pointless. They could have just went straight to, they call it counter-Earth where high evolutionary is making bird and animal people. I don't know. Anyways, so, so it was almost like that whole thing where they had to go to this other base was just kind of pointless. It didn't really do anything at all, really. And on top of that, it just kind of felt like weird, very out of place. Like you could have cut that whole part out and it would have shortened the movie and it would have been better in my opinion. Uh, but anyways, once they, get, once they get this little stupid orb thing and they realize uh, they don't really need it, they have to get this other code that's in the head of the high evolutionaries, like right-hand man or something like that. Um, then they go to Counter-Earth, where the high evolutionary lives. And I like the high evolutionary in, the, in terms that I thought he was like a decent villain. In terms of like he's like crazy and weird. Basically, the story is like a rocket origin story. And so you... Through the, at least through the first like third of the movie, the part where I was like, oh, you don't really need. At least they're giving like little tidbits of Rocket's um, like past and history. So I like that part, but the rest of the stuff I could do without. And, you know, James Gunn is, see, this, this, this is the point. I, I don't know how good of a movie this really was because I feel like James Gunn cheated. And it definitely had a lot of heart and tugged on your heartstrings a lot. And that, maybe that's why I like it. But the thing is, he cheated. He used animals and made you fall in love with animals. And everyone knows that no one likes humans. And they all like animals. So you feel more sorry. Human dies, what to do? No one cares. But an animal, torturing animals, killing animals, like, and, you know, they're innocent. And they're being experimented on. And they're really cute and cuddly. Yeah. Then, of course, it's going to tug on your heartstrings constantly. So I think he cheated. Um, because you put a cute little cuddly animal on screen. And then, of course, you're going to fall in love with that little, you know, little guy, little girl, whatever the animal is. So I think he cheated there um, because I fell for it 100%. Um, you know, if it was a human getting tortured or whatever, I wouldn't care, care less. But you put a bunch of animals on there and they kill them. They straight up kill them and murder them nonstop, like constantly. I'm like, so it definitely makes me hate the high evolutionary because he's the one doing all that stuff. And also he cheated too because James Gunn, I could have swore, said that someone, uh, some Guardians are not going to make it through this. And spoiler alert, like I said in the beginning, they all make it through it. So I'm going in there thinking, okay, who's going to die? 
and you think it's going to be Rocket. Oh, no, no, at the very end, he survives. Then you think he's going to die again. No, 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 he doesn't. Then you think, not Groot, because Groot's already died, and you know he's not going to die. So then you're thinking, oh, maybe it's Gamora. Uh, but no, 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 that, that doesn't happen. Then you think it's Nebula. There's so many scenes that they put in there where you're like, okay, this is the time that this person's going to die, he's going to sit, or this girl, and they're going to save the rest of the Guardians. And no, it doesn't happen. So he definitely planted some seeds, uh, like misdirections, I would say. Um, overall, there was a lot of funny parts in it, like your typical Guardian stuff. And I thought it was a really good movie, had a lot of heart. It didn't have any, your typical, it felt like it was a Marvel movie made before Endgame in terms of it didn't have the, the terribleness that uh, recent MCU movies, movies had. Um, like when you compare like this movie or previous pre-Endgame movies um, to current MCU movies, you're like, ugh. Like, they're just not good. Like, they have a lot of things wrong with them, a lot of eye rolling, and you're like, ugh. Like, the newest Marvels that's coming up, and it's like, ugh. Um, but yeah, so this feels like, it feels like it's, so if you feel the same way I do about recent Marvel movies, this feels like a throwback, I guess, to pre-Endgame. So it's that caliber. It's that caliber. Um, this is pre-Endgame uh, Marvel, uh, where everyone loved Marvel. So there's that going for it. Um, is it a perfect movie? Uh, no, but like I said, it's, it's more of just like that first third where they go to this organ thing, organ planet, whatever, and you're just like, okay, I guess it's kind of funny in concept, but it just, I don't know, it, it drags on, and they should have just cut it out or made it smaller or made it actually worth something because at the end of it, I watched the whole thing, I'm like, oh, this is all pointless. It didn't really do anything. Other than sprinkling in the rocket origin story, that was great, but... It didn't really do anything. Nonetheless, overall, I had a good time. I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, it's pre-Endgame Marvel level, so that's good. But it, I don't know if it's enough to save it, to save the MCU, to be honest. Because it didn't really tie it to anything else, which I kind of liked. Adam Warlock in it, I forgot. The new character, Adam Warlock, was like, okay. I mean, he almost died at one point. So it's like, how strong is he? Nebula just literally stabbed him. So I'm like, okay, he's not that strong. And then, I don't know. So, and he's an okay character. He's kind of dumb. He gets a little pet, which I liked. I thought there would be some, like, turning points. I mean, there was for him a little bit, but, yeah. I don't know. He's part of the Guardians now. So he's okay. Maybe he'll grow on me. I don't know. Uh, but I don't know if it's enough to save it, to be honest. So here's the thing. Normally, I'm talking about pre-Endgame. MCU, the day the tickets go on sale, like it's usually like a month in advance, we have to hurry up and it's like sit there and click on the screen on our internet and get the, you know, tickets, hurry up and get before they're all sold out. Literally the day of, I got tickets, just kind of walked in there and you might be thinking, oh, it's because you saw them 3.30. No, there's tickets for every showing, like tons and tons of tickets available. In the theater, it was about 25% full in the theater that I saw it in, like I don't think people really care about the MCU. Now, that could just be right here where I live. It could be an anomaly, and it might be different. I think this will make a lot of money, but I have a feeling that people are just kind of don't really care about the MCU anymore, and that's because they've had a string of crappy movies and not a reason to care. Like, there's no big baddie or anything like that that you have to, like, you, you know, are waiting to come, like a Thanos or something like that. And what do we got? We got Kang. Ugh worthless uh got beat by a bunch of ants so he's kind of worthless and i don't think the actor who's playing him is even going to be king so you got that going for it but yeah um i don't know I, I i think even though this is a good step forward for marvel i think it's just gonna be like this is kind of like a the last burning flame of just like oh this is what we used to be like and then there's going to go back into the slog of not very good movies that will continue to churn out and it'll just slowly die. Um, but this is like that last breath of hope, but I don't think so because there's a trailer for the Marvels, Marvels and it's just like, ugh, oh, this looks so bad. Um, nonetheless, let me know what you think if you've seen it. Um, like I said, I, I, I liked it. It reminds me of pre-Endgame uh, MCU level quality, uh, but I, I, it's hard to tell because 
James Gunn did cheat by having a bunch of animals like, you know, tug on your heartstrings. So take that, you know, if you don't want to see animals suffer, do not watch this. Do not watch this because it's literally 90% animal suffering and being killed and tortured. So, um, yes. All right. Later. <laughs>